book of Ephesians chapter 2, uh, certainly one of the more familiar chapters in the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, we certainly thank the Lord for verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. I feel sorry for folks who are trying to work their way to heaven. That verse, those two verses right there tell us we, we couldn't work our way to heaven. It took grace, the unmerited favor of God, for us to go to heaven. And that's why we enjoy Christmas so much, because it took the grace of God to send His only begotten Son in this world to die for our sins. We couldn't earn our way to heaven. Christ had to pay for it with his own blood. And we certainly bless the Lord for that. But I'm not going to preach on those two verses. Uh, let's just begin reading verse number one. The Bible says, And you hath he quickened, that word quickened means made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. We thank you for your good grace. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing we've enjoyed tonight. We thank you for the good fellowship before service. We thank you for the good testimonies. We thank you for hearing and answering prayer. We thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Now, Lord, we do pray for those that are sick. We do pray for Brother Jack. You touch him. I pray you'd help him. I'm glad he's better. I pray for Miss Tammy. I pray for the Kirtmans. And, uh, Lord, I do pray for the Dixon family and their loss. I pray, Father, for... Uh, Larry Janke, you know what he stands in need of. And God, we certainly pray for the Fryman family. You would comfort them and help them these days. So, Father, we pray you'd help us in the house of God tonight. Lord, we stand in need of help. Lord, we've come unto thee and looking unto thee, the author and finisher of our faith, to do something for us, to encourage your people, to edify them, build them up, to strengthen them, to, Lord, uh, prepare them and equip them for the days that lie ahead. Now, Father, I pray that you'd bless Brother Ed in his efforts down there tonight, uh, striving uh, at that council meeting uh, to keep alcohol off of their street and out of their neighborhood. Lord, uh, 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 if more people made a stand, we'd see less things going on. And God, I'm thankful he's making a stand, so help him. And, Lord, to be a witness and a light unto thee. Now, Father, bless. Lord, be with our folks that will be traveling the next few days. Give them traveling mercies. And, Father, I certainly do pray you'd bless the reading of the word of God. Use this unworthy vessel. God, help us tonight. We'll thank you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen. And amen. Uh, notice as sinners... First of all, we were in trespasses and sins. Verse number 1 says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. We were dead to God. We were dead to the things of God because we were in our sins. We were accountable for our sins. We sinned willingly and openly, uh, and we were just sinners. Now, can I say that until we were confronted with the gospel, the word of God, we didn't know any different. We just were sinners. There are some people that uh, are more wicked than others, uh, but we were dead to God. Aren't you glad, hallelujah, through the grace of God, you've been made alive to God? And we uh, uh, look around this world, we wonder what's going on. Well, I tell you what's going on, a lot of people are still in their sin. You would be out there acting like them had not God came by your way one day uh, and uh, took the blinders off your eyes and let you see what you were without him. Uh, and when you put your faith in him, he changed your life. And what a blessing. But as sinners, we were in our trespasses and sins. 
Notice, uh, as sinners, we were twirling out of control. Look at verse number 2. Wherein in time past, you ought to underscore that. I'm glad I'm not what I used to be. Uh, in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world. You know why this world's out of control? They're sinners. That's where you were. Unfortunately, there are folks that come to a point in their Christian life that they forgot where God found them, and they look down on people. And can I say that folks out there are acting like they're acting because they don't know the Lord. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, you'd be out there with them. Hmm? You wouldn't be in a church house tonight. You might be in a honky-tonk. Uh, 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 you might be in an alley somewhere. Uh, you might be uh, 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 in some uh, house of ill repute. Uh, 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 who knows where you'd be, but thanks be unto God, we've been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, but it says that we walked according to the course of this world. And now, uh, notice this phrase, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. There are a lot of people that have a misconception about the devil. They think he's in hell. He's not. He's the prince and power of the air. Can I say the, the earth is his domain? And he's walking about seeking whom he may devour. And he is the spirit, that spirit of antichrist that is working in the children of disobedience. You wonder why somebody goes into a school and shoots up a school or a shopping mall uh, or a theater uh, 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 or a restaurant and starts just shooting people. I tell you why, they're full of the devil. That's why uh, 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 the spirit of disobedience uh, has twisted their mind and twisted their thinking. Uh, a lot of them think they're doing something noble uh, and they're wicked taking people's lives. Uh, he's working. He's hard at work. Friend, he used to work in you till you got born again. Hmm? Notice verse 3, Among whom also we all had our conversations in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You know what sinners do? They sin. You say, why are they living that way? They're sinners. Hmm? Instead of judging them, why don't you love them? Why don't you point them to Jesus? Why don't you pray for them? Hmm? Because somebody prayed for you. Somebody pointed you to Jesus. Somebody told you the truth. Hmm? Listen, you know why a lot of sinners don't come to church? Number one, they, they've seen a lot of hypocrites. Now, keep in mind... If somebody goes to one of these feel-good churches and then they're back out in the world in two weeks, all their friends associate the feel-good church with us. And they don't know that some of you have been faithful in the house of God for 20, 30 years, living for Jesus, letting your light shine. They don't care about that. And they know somebody that went to a church and now they're back out in the world. They've returned to their vomit. And they want to associate all of us that way. So they think a lot of us are hypocrites. But you know why? A lot of them don't come. Because they don't think we care about them. They think they'll feel out of place. They think they'll be judged. Listen, every sinner ought to feel welcome when they come to the house of God. Every sinner ought to be loved when they come to the house of God. Listen, the Holy Spirit's the one that'll condemn them. He's the one that'll convict them of their sins. But he does it through love. He shows them the goodness of God even in the midst of their sin. Miss Cinda in her testimony said, why would even God answer our prayers? Why would he hear us? Why would he care about us? Miss Cinda, little Ivy's not your child. Now she's a byproduct of you, but she's not your child. But you love her unconditionally. We are the Lord's children. He loves us unconditionally. Huh? There are times in the future she'll do something that she is not worthy of your care as her great-grandmother. But you ain't going to care what she does. You're going to love her. And can I say there are things that God, he's not pleased with when we do, but can I say this? We're still his children. He loves us in spite of us. Hmm? 
And can I say, when sinners walk in, I don't care where they come from. I don't care what they smell like. I don't care how many tracks they got in their arm. I don't care what uh, a ditch they were in last night. Uh, uh, listen, when they come through that door, uh, what they need to know is that God does love them even in the midst of their sin. Mm -hmm. What can I say? They're twirling out of control. This world's twirling out of control. The psalmist said that the earth is being put off its course. That's what is happening. And can I say, we're the ones with the answer. And the Lord left his church here to be a light to them. Let them know Jesus saves, Jesus saves. And then notice, if you will, as sinners, we were transformed by grace. Verse number four, but God, who's rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved, uh, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places uh, in Christ Jesus, uh, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace uh, in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Uh, for by grace are you saved through faith, uh, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Uh, uh, we find several times, I believe three times right there, uh, uh, that mentions we are what we are by the grace of God. Uh, and can I say that we are even seated in Christ Jesus. Do you realize uh, uh, when you got born again... Uh, and when you got uh, washed in the blood of Christ and the Holy Spirit moved inside of you, uh, you were graven in the palm of Jesus' hand. Uh, you're in His hand, uh, His hand's in the Father's hand. Uh, uh, whether or not you realize it, Christ is in you uh, and you are in Christ. Uh, we are robed in His righteousness, uh, justified by faith. Uh, so wherever He is, there we are. Uh, and He's seated at the right hand of the Father uh, and so are we in Christ. We are made to sit uh, in heavenly places. Uh, the only thing Miss Marcy keeping us from heaven uh, is his sorry no good flesh. Uh, and one of these days we're going to put it off uh, and we're going to be transformed and given a body just like his uh, and we'll be like him forevermore. Uh, but make no mistake, wherever he is, we are. By the grace of God. Uh, we've been transformed by the grace of God. When God looks at us now, Dr. Phil, He doesn't see sinners anymore. He sees saints. Now, we uh, have bought into this uh, 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 t uh, terminology that makes us feel better about ourselves. Uh, we'll say, well, we're just sinners saved by the grace of God. Wrong. Nowhere do you see anybody that is saved in the Bible and they're ever referred to as a sinner again. We're always referred to as the saints, as the brethren, as the children of God, as heirs uh, of God. Uh, we're no longer uh, called by God sinners. Uh, when he looks at you and I, he doesn't see our sin. Uh, being justified uh, uh, doesn't mean just as if I'd never sinned. Uh, it means just as if I'd never been a sinner. Uh, and when he sees me, he sees his child. Huh? I bless his name. But I'm not going to preach on that either. I'm interested in verse number 4. Verse number 4 says, But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Verses 1 through 3 talks about we were dead in trespasses and sins. We had our conversations like the sinners. We walked after the course of this world. We were controlled by the prince of the power of the air. We were nothing but destined for hell. And then verse 4 starts out, but God. I'm going to preach for just a few minutes on but God. Forty-four times in your King James Bible, you'll find that phrase, but God. Amen. But God. But's a conjunction. That means uh, 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 the sentence is going in this direction, and then there's a conjunction that stops and it turns. 
Can I say we were headed to hell? Uh, we deserved to go to hell. We were sinners. Uh, we were deserving of it. Uh, we were headed that way. Uh, 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 and my dear friends, God stepped into the middle of our lives, uh, uh, convicted us of sin. Uh, uh, we uh, 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 put our faith and trust in Him and the finished works of Calvary. Uh, we accepted Him as Lord and Savior, uh, and everything turned uh, on Him. Uh, it said, but. God. Uh, everything turned when God butted into your life, friend. Uh, uh, the direction you was headed, you're not headed anymore. Uh, I'm going to glory. Hallelujah. There ain't enough imps in hell to change that. Uh, hey, uh, my sins are gone. Uh, my name's written in heaven. My conversation's recorded there, and I'm already seated there in Christ Jesus. Uh, but God. What can I say? Even though sin is powerful, and it is powerful, can I say the lust of this world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life uh, has damned many people to hell. Uh, it is powerful. Sin is powerful. Uh, uh, the sin of unbelief is what sends people to hell. It's powerful. Uh, sin has a pull. Uh, uh, sin has ruined many a good people uh, and ruined many a good testimonies. Uh, even though sin is powerful, uh, but God, uh, who is rich in mercy, uh, he moved into my life. Uh, and he broke the power of sin, uh, broke the chains of sin, uh, broke all those things. Uh, and one of these days, uh, hey, in New Jerusalem, uh, uh, the curse will be removed, uh, and there will be no more sin. Uh, but God, uh, a lot of people say, well, I'll get right with God when I quit sinning. You'll never get right with God then. The only one that can change you is God. Because sin has too big a pull. Hmm? And it amuses me when people say, well, why don't they just quit? Why don't you quit your bad habits? Because sin is powerful. But you know who can remove them bad habits from you? God. But God, who is rich in mercy, for with his great love, he loved us. And I say, even though wickedness is prevalent, and wickedness is prevalent, I would have never dreamed five years ago even we'd see some of the things come to light that's coming to light. I would have never dreamed in a million years when I was a young man that I would see things going on and being called normal in these young men's lives. Do you know it is against the FCC laws to show an explicit drag queen show on television? But yet throughout our country, in the states of New York and other places, they're taking kindergarten and first grade te children to go see drag queen shows, uh, and they're being told it's okay to choose your gender. In America, wickedness is prevalent. Mm. In that case, some of you homeschoolers don't know this. There's only two genders, men and women, male and female, God created them. Huh? You got that, Sammy Joe? Now, when you go to school after the break, and they come up and try to tell you that they're a boy, and, and they look like a girl, and act like a girl, and smell like a girl, they're a girl. Hmm? Huh? By the way, you know what they're not publishing? The droves of people that mutilated themselves to change their gender, and now they realize what a mistake that was. Yeah, mm. They thought doing that they'd be accepted. They didn't realize how rejected they'd become even in their own minds. Mm. Have you ever heard the testimony of women that aborted a baby? and how that that never leaves them, that that haunts them. Mm. See, 
Satan will never show you the end result of sin. See, there's pleasure in sin for a season, and he makes people think your sin's okay because everybody wants to be accepted. Everybody wants to be loved. Uh, and people will do anything to be accepted only to find out once they do it, they're still not accepted. Amen. Mm. Wickedness is prevalent. Do you realize we live in a country that was founded on laws and now the top law officials in this country ignore it and break the laws that they've sworn by an oath to uphold in order to have their way? I don't know if you read because if you listen to mainstream media, you're not going to hear any of this. But do you know the FBI has consulted and consorted with all kinds of other media outlets, not only to throw an election, but to spy on human citizens or American citizens uh, in order to have their way amongst uh, 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 this great nation of ours. They're spying on you and I all the time. Hmm? All you got to do is post something that's conservative. All you got to do is say something about the Bible being true. And you're going to flip some red switches and somebody's going to be looking into you. We live in a country that's so wicked that two days ago a 4,100-page document hit that they said we need to vote for. And the, and the senior senator, senator of Kentucky said uh, 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 the number one agenda for America is to make sure Ukraine's taken care of. How about taking care of America? And they're giving $1.7 trillion of our taxpayer money to all their little special interest groups. And they're doing it right now because in two weeks when the new Congress is sworn in, it'll never pass. Here's what's in it. Do you realize there are millions and millions and millions of dollars giving the ATF control to come after your guns? Now, you didn't know that, did you? Neither is most of the senators. They can't read 4,100 pages in two days. They're told like Nancy told a few years ago, just pass it, we'll read it later. Hmm. Problem is we don't have enough numbers to keep it from being passed. Do you realize the president of the Ukraine is here on U.S. soil. He's going to speak to the Congress. Uh, and do you realize that today he thanked Joe Biden for the millions? Didn't thank the U.S., the people who gave it to him. Do you realize we've already given him $100 million and he comes today to ask for more? But yet Trump asked for five, 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 hundred billion. We've given him. Trump asked for five billion dollars for a border security. They laughed at him. Said we don't have that kind of money. I'm telling you, this thing's wicked. Wicked is prevalent. The globalists that are running this country because Joe Biden he ain't even running the ice cream machine he gets his ice cream from. Are you listening? The globalists that are telling you that. We're killing Mother Earth, and everybody needs to get an electric car. Today, Rand Paul asked him, how come it's okay to drill for lithium but not for coal? Yep. Yeah. Mm -mm. Do you realize it takes almost uh, 107 times more to operate an electric vehicle than it does a gas-powered one, as far as emissions, as far as uh, resources and all those sort of things? They don't know all this stuff, but this is how wicked things, this isn't in my notes, this is how wicked this thing has gotten, my dear friends. These globalists are trying to destroy America because America will never, ever go along with the, the agenda of Europe until she does. I've got news for you. I can go back and show you the book of Daniel. There's going to be a one-world government, and you know who's not mentioned? America. This country's going to be destroyed. And it's being destroyed right before our eyes, and it's being done so because Americans uh, have been so sold out to being soft. Uh, and just uh, as long as we got our entertainment, uh, and as long as we got health care, uh, 
As long as we got to, uh, the right to do whatever we feel like we want to do, let them have everything else. Do you realize uh, New York, Chicago, and California is running our nation? Because there's not enough Americans standing up saying, you ain't getting my tax dollars no more. You're fired. Hmm? Because nobody's got the guts to do it anymore. We only have a nation because some guys had some guts and took some pitchforks and muskets and defeated the greatest army that was on the earth at that time. They had a little grit about them. Americans no longer have grit. Can I say Christians no longer have any grit? I get to preaching a little bit and people get a little uneasy. Uh, and you wouldn't believe the excuses I've been given why people can't come to church on Christmas. Uh Lord have mercy, don't get me started. Wickedness is prevalent. You're not hearing it from the national media, but now it's come out that both the uh, Pfizer, Moderna virus uh, vaccine, both of them are linked to causing heart disease. And they're still pushing for you to get the jab. Hmm? Uh, there are healthy people dropping like flies. What I just found out this last week is that an infamous doctor that got banned uh, and, and has all but uh, 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 had the FBI destroy his life, uh, 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 he filed a lawsuit in April of 2020 against Pfizer because their science was wrong. Uh, and it's coming to court soon. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that wickedness is prevalent. Uh, it's everywhere. Uh, 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 talk to police officers uh, and how many folks they had to go to their house uh, 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 where folks are drunk and stoned out of their minds and beating their wives and beating their children. Uh, hey, we live in a day and age uh, uh, where everything goes but righteousness. Amen. Even though wickedness is pre prevalent, but God is rich in mercy. And here we still are. I have Baptist preachers' friends say, Brother Doug, you can't preach like that. They'll come after you. Huh? I, I, I've been God's a long time now, and I ain't, I ain't giving up on God because hmm? he's rich in mercy. Uh, listen, I'm just trying to help you. Thank God for God. Hmm? Even though evil is pursuing, it's raging, it's seeking after people, but God is rich in mercy. Hmm? He still loves us, and he's still saving sinners. He's still sending revival. He's still changing lives. Uh, 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 all the odds are stacked against us. You realize that, don't you? Uh, 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 it's coming down with that law they passed, uh, that marriage act, uh, where they're saying now uh, uh, that churches can no longer uh, uh, turn away homosexuals. You watch and see. I'll preach Jesus to them, uh, and I'll preach uh, 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 the queerness out of them, or they'll get gone, bless God. Uh, I'm not accepting a one of them because Jesus doesn't. Uh, uh, the Bible says mankind shall not lie with mankind. Kind, uh, as with womankind, it is an abomination. Uh, and if it stinks in the nostrils of God, uh, it ought to stink in our nostrils. Uh, and they can pass all the laws they want. Uh, I'm going by this one. Hallelujah. I bless God. God's still in control of this thing. Hmm. Evil's raging, but God's still reigning. Hmm. Can I say this? Even though Satan's a prowling, and he is walking about seeking whom he may devour. And can I say, uh, he doesn't slumber or sleep. He's constantly on the prowl. I believe Brother James, he knows his days are numbered. Uh, I believe he's pulling out all the stops. Uh, I believe he wants you to quit singing. Uh, I believe he wants Miss Lisa to quit being faithful. Uh, I believe he wants Brother Ray to quit being happy. Uh, I believe he wants Brother Donna to get over being saved. Uh, I believe he's got a bullseye on your back. Uh, and he's trying to do everything he can to knock you off. Uh, 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 the, uh, your testimony off this way called straight uh, but I'm here to tell you uh, God's all powerful uh, uh, it's worth it living for Jesus uh, hey not the uh, sorry no good devil huff and puff uh, he'll not blow this house down uh, uh, the church isn't going down she's uh, going up because uh, uh, the Lord's in control of this thing uh, can I say even though problems persist we all got problems. Nobody likes problems. People got bills to pay. 
with this $1.7 trillion thing they're about ready to pass, inflation's going to go through the roof, friends. You think milk's high now. What nation pays dairy farmers not to produce milk so they can jack the prices up? You know, if America would produce all the food that God has blessed this nation to be able to do, we could feed the world. But they don't want to feed the world. They want to control the population of the world. And they don't want you to live prosperous. They want you to remain a peasant because they want you to believe you need them to survive. Hmm? Go back and do some research. Look at the Internet, what Bill Gates said just a couple years ago about population control. What in the world was our nation listening to Bill Gates for about this vaccine? He's not a doctor. Uh, matter of fact, uh, uh, he just was a software guy. Uh, made billions of dollars. Uh, uh, but he's been promoting it. Uh, why is Bill Gates buying farmland? Uh, he's buying farmland so farmers don't have it and uh, farmers aren't producing food. Uh, why do you think bacon costs what bacon costs? Uh, why do you think potatoes cost what they cost? Uh, why do you think everything keeps going up uh, they're trying to destroy uh, you and I in this nation uh, but God uh, even though problems persist uh, even though the prices steep keep going up uh, God's faithful uh, and he said uh, David said he'd never seen the righteous forsaken uh, nor seed begging bread uh, listen uh, I don't care what the prices are uh, God's been good we got food in the cupboard uh, we got milk in the fridge uh, God's been good, uh, and God's been good to you. Uh, hey, uh, even though it looks bleak, uh, God shines the brightest when things get the darkest. Mm. I don't like paying for gas, what we have to pay for gas. But all the time I'm paying for it, I'm thanking God that I don't have a diesel. No. Uh, listen. You know why there's that big a despair? Because them trucks burn diesel that brings them groceries to your grocery store. It's all price gouging. We not only have financial problems, we got problems dealing with life itself. You got problems on the job. You don't know if your company's selling out or not. You got coworkers that are knuckleheads. You got a boss man that's a knucklehead. Huh? You got problems in school. Huh? Used to, the school was about reading, writing, and arithmetic. Uh, now it's about getting good test grades so the school gets more funding. Mm. You're welcome. It didn't cost anything. Uh, there's problems with kids at school. Uh, I never heard the likes of all this bullying going on. Back in my day, somebody had a, uh, the guy was a bully, you popped him in the nose. That's in the bully. Uh, it's one of them deals. You can't do that now. They'll send you to jail if you pop somebody in the nose. Let the bully go free. Uh, listen, Miss Brittany was telling me in Ohio there's a bill trying to do away with the school boards where the state controls everything and the parents don't have any say. Well, that's what they want. If I had a kid in school right now, I'd be down at every school board meeting. I'd be banging on the desk. Uh, I'd be telling them, don't, don't, don't have that critical race theory stuff here. Uh, I don't have that non-gender, non-binary junk here. Uh, 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 hey, uh, let's teach these kids what we're supposed to teach them. Math, English, no Spanish, press one for English only. Uh, where in the world did that come from? Hey, when the Irish came here 150 years ago, they had to learn English. When the Germans came here, they had to learn English. When the Japanese and the Chinese came here, even though they can't say R's, they still had to learn English. Lucas, all their R's sound like L's. Uh, that's true. Can I tell this? Y'all ain't getting this anyway. A couple years ago, we was in Florida. That's a true story. We was in Florida, and we're drive through at McDonald's. You know, thank God there's a McDonald's every 50 feet in this country. So we, we, we hit the drive through It's kind of late at night. We hit a drive through and all four doors in this car opens up, and I said, it looks like a Chinese fire drill. And I, uh, with God as my witness, everybody that piled out of that car was Chinese or Asian, Japanese or something. 
And we laughed. We got a big kick out of that. And two of them took off and went through some bushes. We never did see them come back. I don't know what happened to them guys. But they got up and they're ordering. They were trying to order filet of fish. But they couldn't say it. They just go, filet fish! Filet fish! And the little girl on the other end said, what? Filet fish! And their voice kept getting higher and higher. Filet fish! Filet fish! Filet fish! Finally, I stuck my head out the window. I said, they want some filet of fishes. <laughs> if you're going to go through the drive-thru, know how to order. Uh, that's a true story. We're still laughing over that. The kids were little when that happened. That was a true story. Uh, because I said there's problems in this world. There's problems where we don't have to deal with all these agendas that the crowd's shoving down our faces. You can't watch a game show anymore that there's not somebody on there with an LBGQ BVD or something behind their name. Uh, we got real problems. There are people that have sick children. There are people that are losing their homes. There are people that have broken down vehicles and can't fix them. I mean, there are folks got some real life issues and life problems. What's sad is America has resources that nobody should have any problems. There shouldn't be a homeless person in this country. Now, I know a lot of them are there because they choose not to work, and the Bible says man doesn't work, shouldn't eat, and a lot of them have, have made bad choices, and that's where they are. But can I say there's a lot of people that have mental health problems that are homeless. Can I say there's a lot of veterans that came back from uh, 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 seeing war zones and came back and couldn't deal with society, and they're homeless tonight. It's a sad, sad, sad thing what we've done to our veterans in this country. Mm. I mean, a lot of these men went and they, they were willing to pay the ultimate sacrifice that we could have an easy life and we just kick them to the curb. There's some real problems. But in spite of the fact that problems persist, there's still God on the throne and he's able to solve every problem. Thought about this. Even though hell's patient. Oh, it's patient. It's waiting. Do you know hell enlarges their borders every day? Huh? The devil knows he may not get them today, but there's always tomorrow. Even though hell is patient, heaven's still real because God is still on the throne. I said all that, say this. Quit looking around. You look around, you're not going to see anything but pain and hurt and misery. Learn to look up. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. There's no problem too big for him that he can't solve. There's nothing that you will face that he hasn't already conquered. And friend, if he allows you to go through something that's not pleasant, just trust him because he has a reason. And in it, in, in through and by it all, it's all about him getting glory from your life. When you realize your life's not your own, and you realize you belong to him, you can just rest in that and know he's going to take care of you. Little Ivy's over there having a time. There's not one minute of one day she frets over if she's going to have something to eat or not. There's not one day that she frets that she's not going to have clothes to put on her back. There's not one day that she frets over the fact that she's not going to have grandma or great-grandma's attention whenever she wants it. That's how we should be with God. You know why you're all tore up on the inside? You're trying to control things that are out of your control. Just look to Him. Let Him have it. Just trust in Him. Know He's going to feed you. He's going to clothe you. He's going to take care of you. And there's not a time that you don't call His name that you don't have His undivided attention. So why don't we rest in that? Why don't we rest in this? Saved by the grace of God. Because uh, when you put it all in perspective, what problems come into my life are really his problems. They're not my problem. 
I belong to him. Huh? When you put in perspective uh, what turmoil comes in my life isn't my turmoil, it's his turmoil. When you put in perspective uh, what's going on in this world that you can't control, he's in control. Do you think all that would be going on in Washington if God didn't want it to go on? Do you think that's catching him by surprise? It's catching us by surprise. We're starting to see some of it come to light. He's known about it all along. And I've got good news, friend. We think some of them are getting away with stuff. They're not getting away with things. One of these days, the righteous judge is coming. And there's no plea bargaining with him. Hmm? He's going to right every wrong. So why do we fret over things out of our control? Just learn and discipline yourself. Keep your eyes on him. Just like Ivy's got her eyes. Well, she's looking at me right now. How you doing, baby? Well, dad, she's got her eyes on grandma and great-grandma. That's all you got to do is keep your eyes on the Lord. Trust him. It'll be all right. Does not the Bible teach about having a childlike faith? Hmm. A childlike faith don't say, well, God can, but. Childlike faith says, God will. And we just trust him. So tonight, remember, but God. No matter what bad news you hear, just say, but God. Because if it wasn't for his grace, we'd already be in a mess. But God is able. Tonight, maybe you need to come and tell him, you know what, Lord, I haven't been trusting you. I have been trying to handle it and controlling it myself. And by the way, if you want to take the reins and try and control it yourself, you know what he'll do? He'll let you until you're willing to throw up your hand and say, Lord, I can't do this. Maybe tonight you need to say, Lord, I can't do this. Maybe tonight you just need to come and say, Lord, thank you for being so much bigger than I and taking care of all this stuff because, Lord, it's too much too big for me. Maybe tonight you just need to come and tell him you love him because he loved you even when you were dead in trespasses and sins. Maybe tonight you just want to come thank him that you're saved, that you have hope in heaven, and you even have a hope for a better life. He come to give us an abundant life. Yeah. Maybe tonight he spoke to you about something else. You just mind the Lord. It's going to be all right. Uh -uh. I promise you, nothing's caught him by surprise, and it'll be all right. I've done read the back of the book. Guess what? We win. It's all going to be wonderful one of these days. And who knows? Wouldn't it be wonderful spending Christmas in heaven? Hmm? Huh? Wouldn't it be wonderful Dr. Phil being raptured from a cruise ship? That'd be wonderful. Yeah, see, and you can have it, Captain, because the captain's called me. Huh? So, friend, don't fret. Just have faith. But God, let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. I'm already coming and praying. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. Maybe God put somebody in your heart. You want to go tell them they've been a blessing. Just mind the Lord. He's here. Let him have his way. And you'll never be sorry that you let God have his way. As folks, pick, They're picking out a song. Folks are praying. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for your great mercy and your great love wherewith you loved us even when we were dead in our trespasses and sin. Thank you, Lord, for quickening us by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to understand some, some of the truths of the Bible. And Lord, one of them is that we're your child. Lord, we bless you and praise you. Now, bless this invitation. Some have already come and praying. I don't know what they're talking to you about, but God, thank you for hearing their prayers. Bless them and help them. Bless those praying in the pews. And God, just have your way in people's lives. Well, thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.